veterinary medicine. Okay. Yeah. Uh, time is yours, Doc. Thank you very much. Um, I first of all would like to uh, congratulate uh, Dr. Mary and Karen and everybody here. I've been here in Indonesia since 2014, and I have seen this whole development of animal welfare growing, and we're now in 2022, and here's our first animal welfare conference. I am so proud of everybody here and online. So today I uh, would like to tell you something about, I'm a veterinarian from, from uh, the Netherlands, but in 2014, I uh, came to Indonesia. And since then I've been very much involved and they keep me busy daily with all the hewan that Jakarta Animal Aid Network is rescuing. So I couldn't say no to them. Basically, I fell into the trap, right? Mm -hmm. So I started my own little foundation because I see that veterinarians are struggling, are struggling how to basically implement this animal welfare into their daily practice and into their thinking. And it has overwhelmed me too. Um, the amount of uh, welfare for us veterinarians too, who are uh, looking at all the injuries and all the abuse we see daily and registering that there are animals out there who are hungry and thirsty or injured, you need to be able to, um, I would like to provide you basically with a tool to keep you sane while you are trying to help these animals because it's an emotional business guys and we need to stay on our feet and i know veterinarians are going to be a huge part of voicing basically what these animals cannot communicate to us now today i would focus on the dancing monkey basically you can extrapolate it to any hewan Okay, I'm sorry for my mix of English and Dutch. And if anybody doesn't understand something I'm saying, please tell me. <laughs> so a little bit of history on animal welfare. Maybe you didn't know, but in 530 before Christ, Pythagoras was already thinking about animal welfare. I know that all of you know Pythagoras from math, right? Well, you didn't know, he is an animal welfare advocate too. Can you imagine? And then of course it went through the ages and Ibu Wiwik has also already told us about it. You know, people, philosophers, not veterinarians, but philosophers were asking the question, can they reason? Can they talk? No, it's about, can they suffer? Can they feel? Right, so throughout history, you see in Europe, it's starting to be integrated into all the laws. And then you suddenly see the term sentient, sentient being, sentience added. And this is what Ibu Wiwik has also stressed about, what Vivian Gerlich has talked about this morning. This is an important concept. And you also recognize the five freedoms of animal welfare. And you see them throughout everywhere. So. Animal sentience, what is it? It's a difficult word, guys, right? So basically I break it down to the ability of animals to feel and experience an emotion, whether it's a positive one like joy and pleasure or a negative one like pain and fear. And then of course we have the animal protection laws to protect them against the negative states, right? So. We have the World Organization for Animal Health. It was, it used to be called OIE because it was French, guys, and it is very confusing, I know. But I'm glad to say that Indonesia has already been a member since 1954. That's a long time, guys. And if you look at their definition of animal welfare, it means the physical and mental state of an animal in relation to the conditions in which it lives and dies, right? So conditioning. So in your veterinary work, I mean, I did that. 
I did preventive care like vaccination in dogs and cats. And especially in dogs, the trick that would really give them a positive, positive emotion would be to just offer them a cookie while you're vaccinating them. So the next time he would come to my to my um, uh, practice, that they would be wagging their tail, right? That is a positive, affirmative way to make animals happy, right? So here's a happy dog, right? This is not difficult. And now we're talking about wildlife because Satwa Lear, guys, that's a totally different field, right? Wildlife considers us as their predators. So that is the major, major things. And we get very confused in what they are conveying to us. What is this behavior? A lot of people think this is a smile. It is not, guys. It's a fear face. And I think 99% of the people out there don't know this. We veterinarians know, but we need to communicate this. So dancing monkeys, we all know is long-tailed macaques. They seem as if there's a lot of them out there in Indonesia, but they're not. They're rapidly declining. So there's legislation banning topeng moyet, the dancing monkeys. I don't have to tell you what it is. Their CETA status has skyrocketed from least concern suddenly to endangered. Oh, wow. So their numbers are declining. You have your anti-cruelty laws in the Indonesian law. So there is some sort of protection. And again, you can recognize the five freedoms of animal welfare. But how do I do that as a veterinarian? Me, a single veterinarian, right? There's so much out there. So there's so many frameworks, right? The five freedoms, the five domains. And now Utrecht has in 2022, like Vivian said, um, published the dynamic concept of animal welfare. Well, let's look at it. It's really clear, right? The green is the good welfare. The red, that's seriously impaired welfare. The, the yellow one is where we still have to improve something. Yeah, so I'm just cutting it down in simple terms. If you're interested in this article, please do read it from, from the first letter to the last. An artist friend of mine who's sitting out there, she's Tiwi, she's selling all these ni nice Jan merchandise, please, please go and buy to support them. She made this tree for me. She basically made a beautiful tree saying where we are in the red zone of well animal welfare and where we go towards the green zone of animal welfare. And maybe you can appreciate it's the simple things like shelter, clean water, sanitary living conditions up to the green area of welfare where you have a choice, a choice to avoid the negative and to interact with the positive. Yeah. So external factors, internal factors, they all compile animal welfare. Now you're a veterinarian, you're smart. And what you didn't know, you're also a detective. And with simple tools like your eyes, your ears, your nose, and your brain, you don't even need an x-ray or anything, guys. You can detect so much. You guys are going to help us in the forensic field. This might be a surprise because you guys all know forensics, human forensics, CSI series, where they're all looking at dead bodies. Well, I can tell you, we veterinarians also look at live bodies, live animals, because I think somebody mentioned it, Matthew mentioned it already today. There is a connection, guys, between animal abuse, child abuse, domestic abuse. And we veterinarians are the front runners. We can be the first one to detect this on the animal that is on our table. So you guys have brains. You're academically formed. You're used to document so please do that rigorously because you don't know at the end of the road, if you find injuries on that animal, that you might be asked to be a veterinary specialist in a court case, or they might ask you for advice. And that that Hewan's document that you made maybe a year ago, maybe a month ago, maybe a week ago, is going to be a lifesaver. 
because it's going to be very, very important. Now, you work systematically, and in Satwa Liar, 50% is hands off, yeah? And 50% is hands on. So as you maybe can appreciate in these systematic steps, you're not even touching that animal in the beginning. No, because Satwa Liar, you do it with CCTV. You talk to the caretakers to get as much information before even touching that animal. Now, I've broken it down in really easy questions. These are the questions we're going to answer. Are the animals properly fed? Let's go and see. So for Macaca fascicularis, you go and find your resources because animal welfare is species specific. It's not the same for dogs or for dancing monkeys. Now I'm gonna apologize for some of the pictures I'm showing. Maybe some people need to close their eyes because it's a bit awful. Yeah, guys? So are the animals properly fed? Long-tailed macaques, body weight, you can look it up. Adult male, five to nine kg, female three to six kg, their diet, you can look it up. We have the body score, of course, because it's not just a body weight. We have all these body types, right guys? And I put the fish there because they're cute, right? And I hope that you can remember. So there's two scales, one to five and one to nine. Pick one, I don't care which one, just write it down, document it, which one you're using. Because three can be optimal, but three in the nine point scale is thin, yeah? So document. This monkey is too fat. So obesity is also a form of animal cruelty. Unfortunately, the dancing monkeys and the monkeys that, that Jan rescues are usually too thin and dehydrated. You can appreciate this. Document it. Are the animals healthy? Are there any, any scars or wounds from abuse? Let's see. Everybody knows that these canines are normal on that one side. On the other side is a dancing monkey. And not a lot of people look inside their mouth, but their canines are not intact. And we veterinarians know how they do it. That's not a veterinarian doing that, that's layman doing it without anesthesia or anything. Can you appreciate how long that root of that canine is into the skull? So if you put pressure on it with that clipper, that is gonna make a lot of damage. And from the outside of the cage, I can see that bump on that nose. What is that? We know it from a P4 infection in dogs, right? The domestic people know that. Well, this is from a clipped canine, guys. This is a fistula, right? Fistula is on the chin. So to, since 2014, I've implemented a dental care system for every individual macaque and the, with the goal of releasing them without any oral infection. So let's go, our Afi, yeah? We rescued him, just put him on his side, make a good overview picture with everything on him, his chain, his clothes, everything. You take everything off, you take another picture, you put that reference there. Do you see the senti there? That's important. I put it on the scale just for reference and I extrapolate it to a human being carrying a neck chain of one kg day and night, 24 seven. Not nice, I don't wanna do that. What is this? That is from an ingrown chain, ingrown collar. It's a big, big problem. We also see it in pent monkeys around their waist and it can form and misform them. And it is very, very important. So your wound care, you better be kind to the animal and to your tissue. So I see a lot of veterinarians using povidone iodine, not diluted. You will kill all your new cells. Please dilute it, yeah, guys? So wound care, give clear instructions. Do you see that needle on the one side, still on the syringe? You better communicate that that's a dangerous way to treat that wound, yeah? So animal welfare goes a long way. Yeah, your principles of surgery need to be top notch. First intention healing. In monkeys, they will try to pull out every knot you have on the outside. So you need to be really good at intradermal sur uh, surgery and at burying your knots, guys. Yeah, 
and you need to give them post-surgery enrichment because not just your surgery is important, but everything around it. And this is not an option. Yeah, you can't tie up a monkey for 10 to 14 days that it takes for a wound to heal. This is not an option. Yeah, so bullets, another injury that we see, ectoparasites. Then are the animals, the dancing monkeys properly housed? There's our Afi again in his topping moignette. What do you call this house? I don't know what I call this. And this is how they kept six monkeys. And I don't think that is a good social way for a macaca fascicularis to live. Now the influence of evidence on animal cruelty prosecution, the judge wants to see your documents, wants to hear you tell them to advise you, wants to see those photographs. So please do that and help us in this fight by simply answering those questions. Are they properly fed? Are they dehydrated or not? Document it and it is your simple, normal veterinary file, guys. Yeah, so help us here. Thank you very much. I hope this helped you a bit.